Hey, good afternoon everyone. Tractor Man 44 here. Hey, what we're going to do is we're going to make a return air box. It's going to be another vanilla flavored return air box in one of many variations. And I've made a dozen of them probably already on YouTube exactly like this. So it's going to be old hat to some of the people that have watched my videos before. Some of the other guys, it might be new material. But it's a tried and true method. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to draw it out with a magic marker on a piece of scrap metal so you can see what it is I'm laying out with the scratch all during the layout. Essentially what we're going to do is do nothing but make a box. We're going to make a box like this right here. Alright, if you visualize, now you can actually see the, uh, the inside of the box. So up here on top, we want it to be strong because the furnace is going to actually sit on this. So we're going to come in for two inches. We're going to come across all the way around at a 90 degree angle, two inches. And then to reinforce that, we're going to build an, bend an additional half inch underneath at some predetermined angle, probably 45 degree angle. That'll give us a nice large platform here, rigid platform for the furnace to sit down on. If you want to use your rubber tape in order to seal it, or you can run a bead of uh, vulcum or silicone caulk to set the furnace down on top of it. And then the return air will come in, and then the hole for the return will be cut into the side of it like this and then physically attached with sheet metal screws. But this is what we're going to fabricate right here. When I make these return air fittings like that, I like to make a horseshoe, a three-sided horseshoe, and then I need to, I like to put the plugs into the two sides. So the dimension on this is gonna be 18 inches high, 17 and a half wide, 21 inches deep. So we're gonna go ahead and add uh, 18, 18, 17 and one half, and then we want two inch, two inch, half inch, half inch, so that's gonna be five. So what we're gonna do here is go uh, 8 and 7 is 15 and 5 is 20 plus 8 is 28 and a half. So it's going to be 28 and a half. Okay, so now 2, 3, 4, 5. So 58 and 1 half by 21 plus the 2 for the Pittsburghs makes it 23 inches. So our cut size for the outside wrapper is going to be 51 and a half by 23. First thing we want to do is take our scribe and we'll go ahead and mark for our Pittsburgh at least 53 inches up the length of this. Down here on this end, we're going to, um, we know we have to start off with two and a half inches because we want a two inch flange plus a half inch bent over. So we're going to start off with a two and a half inch measurement. Remember the cut size on this is 23 inches. Well, I've got a 24 inch by 26 gauge piece of material. So I'm just going to have to cut one inch off of that. Next thing is going to be 18 inches off of the two and a half. 17 and a half inches off of that. All on the one inch scribe line. Then 18 inches again for the height. Then we add two and a half for the flange. And to double check our measurement or our addition, we can just throw this down here and hopefully it'll come out to the dimension we added it to. The dimension we added was what, 58 and uh, 58 and a half? 58 and one half inches. So now you can use a four foot square, square across here and scribe all of your marks all the way across. Okay, the rough is cut out. I've got one side notched. I'll go ahead and notch this side for you here. Remember, we've got our lock former or Pittsburgh marked on the edge. So that comes in one inch. This is going to be our two and a half inch reinforcement. So we'll cut all the way in two and a half inches and then trim that last half inch off at a 45. Now we come in at our 18 inch mark on the lock former or Pittsburgh line and notch that in. Now it's prepared to uh, get a cross break on and run through the lock. Now folding these big horseshoes are always awkward and sometimes exceptionally difficult to do. That's that half inch. We're going to put it just a little over maybe 45 degrees or thereabouts. We're going to pop out to the two inch mark. Now bear in mind every time you latch down on a Pittsburgh you're smashing it completely shut which means you're going to have to work to uh, get your piece of metal in there. So I'd try not to latch them completely down unless it's absolutely necessary.
I'm just getting a bit of a crack on that right there. Now we got that bit of a crack on there, we can fold that the rest of the way because it's already started the direction it needs to go. There's the hard shoe, so now we need to make the two plugs. The dimension on this should be 17 and a half inches wide. 17 and a half plus a quarter plus a quarter is going to be 18 inches wide. It's going to be 18 inches tall. We have to add a quarter, so that's 18 and a quarter plus two and a half for the two inch in and a half inch bent down. So we have to make two of them that cut size. We have to add that up real quick. So if we've got 18 inches in height, 18 plus two and a half. So 18 and two and one half plus a quarter for going inside. So this is going to be one quarter. So 18 and 2 is 20. So 20 and 1 half plus a quarter is 20 and 3 quarters by the width, which is 17 and a half plus a quarter plus a quarter. So that's 18. So two cut sheets, two cut sizes, 20 and 3 quarter by 18 gets us our two plugs. So okay, we know that uh, we have to have a quarter inch up the sides and have to have a quarter inch across the bottom. And then this is uh, 17 and a half inches deep. So we're going to be 17 and 3 quarter from the outside edge. We're going to 18, 18 inches high plus a quarter inch. So we're going to be up 18 and 1 quarter. We may as well mark it for both pieces because they're both coming out of this. So it's going to be 18 and a quarter plus 2 and a half. So 18 and a quarter plus 2 and a half. So we're going to cut the length or mark the length for both of them at the same time. Now we, we may as well go ahead and mark 17 and a half on this one also. 17 and a half, the cut size is 18, remember? Okay, we went ahead and notched. We marked a quarter all the way around the three sides because of the Pittsburgh on the three sides. We've got two and a half inches marked so we can fold in the two inch and the half inch fold over. Now you got to think about this, whenever you fold this over, unless you notch this properly, those folds are going to come in, they're going to come in conflict with these folds that are up here. So if you think about it a little bit ahead of time, you can actually make this to where it will fit right in and give assistance, lend credence to, st to adding stability to the, uh, to the box if you notch them correctly. So like right now, I went ahead and cut the, uh, the quarter inch corners off. And what we'll do is go ahead and mark this quarter. Notch that quarter right there. We'll take the quarter all the way down and mark in two inches off of that edge on both sides. But don't cut that half inch off and trim the corner. Well, let's fold this up and take a look see what happens. Probably put a little cross break, just a little. Just a little stiff. Let's go ahead and fold our half inch. Take our half inch all the way over to the 45 degree, or thereabouts. We'll come back to the two inch and take it to 90 degrees. And we can fold this side right here easily. Take that quarter inch to 90. We can do another one right here. And you can rapidly see a conflict coming with the last bend. The conflict being, you can't fold this up right here. However, you have two ends to the brake. So go to the far end of the brake. Now if we're lucky, as we attach the sides, these corners or these flanges, these reinforcement flanges, with this two inch notch all the way in, will remain conflict free and hopefully slide over the top of that one right there. Allowing us to put a pop rivet or something or maybe two pop rivets to hold everything square or to help hold everything square.
Don't worry, we'll use an electric hammer and make that nice. See there, no conflict, that's good. Put the other plug in, we'll come back and lash these down with electric hammer. We're gonna go ahead and put a square on this, double check, make sure it's square, and put two pop rivets at each corner. One pop rivet will still allow it to flex back and forth. It'll turn from a square or into a diamond. So two of them will keep that from happening. Yeah, it's pretty simple to set a square up on there, get your clamp ready and just sandwich it down real quick and easy. Putting that clamp inside holds that bottom from bending in when you penetrate this outer skin with the drill. Once you get them pop riveted in place, get your piece of uh, steel, or well like this, a chunk of brass right here. You can hold it right up underneath there. Let's see if I get this side here. Hold it right up underneath there and set them rivets. Aluminum rivets take very little to set. That'll make sure your furnace gets a nice flat base in order to set on. But I'll probably put two inch Armaflex tape all the way around the perimeter of this and then set the furnace directly on top, minimize any, uh, any leakage or whatever. However, this is uh, not really a finished area, but um, it's not like it's in an attic. So any air infiltration from down in and around the laundry area is actually kind of good because it'll kind of help dehumidify you know, that area down near the laundry machine, you know, the washing machine and the, uh, the dryer. So it doesn't really hurt if there's a little bit of leakage, especially on the return side. Most systems suffer for return error anyway, so if you got a little bit of leakage on the return, it actually kind of helps the systems. Here you are, nice, secure, 26 gauge return air box for the furnace to sit on. Now you can almost see the furnace sitting down in the basement on top of this right here, but you can't really see how the return duct is going to attach to it. Well, all you guys that, that understand the field know exactly what I'm talking about, but this is what's going to actually attach to it. This is a return air drop, the bottom of a return air drop that, uh, that are made with a, a filter rack built right into it. So this is going to, uh, this flange is going to screw and attach right to the sides of it. The opening right here will be cut out in the side to match for the return air coming down and re-entering into the bottom of the air handler. And this is gonna be securely mounted right to the side of it. And the filter will be able to be changed through this slot without any muss, no fuss, no aggravation. All the screws will be pointed the other direction. There'll be nothing to interfere with the, uh, with the filter. And the vast majority of people out there that change their own filters know how aggravating it can be sometimes changing filters. But at any rate, that's how that's going to go. This is just a rerun of a of a, I know, well, it's another slight variation, uh, just a very slight variation, not a, not a big deal, but it still gives you a good secure base for that furnace to set on. Now you can see it's rocking right here a little bit. That's because of the cross brakes and everything like that. When it's actually setting on the concrete floor and got the weight of the furnace, the uh, air handler on top of it, it's going to sit down, just squish in and just be absolutely perfect. And then, of course, uh, it's going to be held a little more rigid, you know, by the addition of the return air drop and everything like that. The project is going to be a pretty awesome project and so I'm going to stretch it all out. I'm not going to try to do it all one video or, or even in two or three videos. I'm going to stretch it all out. If there's anything fancy or particular, I'm going to go ahead and, and sort that out and, and make a separate video on that just because it just exposes more of what it is that we do on the job sites for people that aren't really familiar with what has to happen in order to get a project from start to finish uh, installed. First off, measured secondly fabricated and and lastly installed and started up so at any rate hope you all enjoyed that and yeah, this is dragman 44 and i'm out of here for today guys